Hello, and welcome to SCP Versus. My name is Jeremiah Samarian, and today we're going to do a um, completely new series. Previously, we had done Dr. Bright versus a variety of SCPs. Today, we're going to do something a little different. SCP-173 versus Random D-Class. Let's get started. Jeffrey Winters looked down at his orange jumpsuit shook his head, and took a step forward. The intercom buzzed again. At least one individual should keep visual contact with the object at all times. SCP-173's containment chamber was well lit and reminded Winters of a hospital morgue. The smell of blood and feces was almost overwhelming, but Winters put the mop to work on the mess. His back was not what it used to be, but this was pretty light work, and the faster he got it done, the faster he could get out of the cell. Two other D-Class were present, the first was a barrel-chested man with the beginnings of gray hair around his temples. Winters didn't know him very well, but the accent made him think the man was from the upper Midwest. The other was a younger man, a beanpole of a kid that he'd worked with several times before. The kid was more clever than smart, but he thought he was both. That made working with him very exciting, and sometimes dangerous. Blinking, the older D-Class said. Done. After a few seconds, the younger kid responded. They traded off for several more minutes as Winters kept mopping. The three of them knew this was not the place for idle conversation. They'd all seen what a distraction could cause in the past. And all three of them knew how important it was to remain focused once the rumbling shook the entire room. Please remain in place, the intercom buzzed. The airlock behind them shut completely, both doors, before they could even move away from SCP-173. The whole room shook again. None of the lights went out completely, but they began to flicker with the rumbling. All three of them held their breath and began fumbling on their belts for the flashlights when the lights went out completely. He could hear a choked scream as he clicked his own flashlight on. The statue was standing over the older D-Class with his arms outstretched. The younger D-Class was screaming, Get us the fuck out of here! At that moment, the doors behind them opened. Both of them stepped backwards into the airlock, but then they realized that both doors were open at the same time. That wasn't a good sign. A garbled computer voice spoke through the intercom system, and the ground rumbled again as they stepped out of the airlock. The doors didn't close, and the only other voices they could hear were distant and shrill. In a crisis, shouting is a sign that someone is taking charge and that things are getting done. These were not shouts. Winters got a chill up his spine, blinking. Done, was the only thing he said out loud. The younger D-Class came up with a plan for both of them to get out of this. Now, he'd been working on another project recently, some sort of machine that could destroy things. Winters had actually helped with the testing before as well, so he knew a little bit more about it. It was SCP-914. The two of them started leading SCP-173 around corners and down hallways in the direction they thought the object was. They'd hoped to run into others, and they had, but... None of them were alive. At any point, they realized they could back into a monster. By chance, and with a little bit of foreknowledge, they found their way to SCP-914's chamber without any harm. The chamber had a non-mechanical door, so if they could lure the object in there, they could just close the door and trap it there. They debated for several minutes that trapping themselves inside and hoping for the best might be a good option, but the bodies they'd almost tripped on on the way here made that seem like a less than viable option. They'd either need to escape themselves or they were going to die in here. In the darkness, with their flashlights, they spotted the machine. Okay, we need to figure out how to lure him into the machine, the kid said with an unearned certainty. Winters cocked his eyebrow but didn't stop looking at the statue. What? No. We should just close the door. I've seen this thing do all sorts of cool shit. We could probably use it to get ourselves out of here. No, that's stupid. Just Let's go. The kid put his hand on the door and stopped Winters from shutting it. I'm making a decision here, or we're getting rid of this thing. Winters' left eye twitched, but then he nodded. Okay, but you lure it into the booth. The kid smirked. No problem. On the way here, they'd already gotten a good estimation on how far the thing could move in the space of a single blink. It wasn't as instantaneous as they'd first thought, but it was still pretty fast. It took several passes to get it far enough away to lure it into the booth without being sure it would kill the kid. Blinking. Done, Winters had said. 
and he noticed with a certain level of satisfaction that the thing was in the booth with the kid. But the kid wasn't talking. He wasn't responding at all. Winters was sort of worried for a moment until he could hear the kid kicking. They'd underestimated by about a foot, and the thing had him by the neck. He could see the kid turning red. The statue had lifted him off the ground and was in the act of pressing on the kid's windpipe. Winters took a gamble. He changed the setting from course to one-to-one -one and hit the activation button. And then he ran out while it began to process and shut the chamber door. With any luck, the alternate version of 173 it created wouldn't kill this kid. That was no longer his problem, though. Jeffrey Winters looked down the long, dark hallway and started to run. And that's that. Looks like the D-Class sort of won in a battle of survival, at the very least. There's no way he was ever going to kill it, but hey, at least he survived. I'm going to have a poll up on my Twitter. You're going to be able to find a link to it in the description and probably in a pinned comment that will ask you what this D-Class should face next on his way out of this breached site. So head on over to Twitter, following that link, follow me, and vote on what you think should happen next. And finally, it's the first of the month, so it's a very, very, very good time for you to start pledging on Patreon. These are my Patreon pledges for this month so far, and if you pledge, you'll get a special shout out in a weekday video. So head on over to patreon.com forward slash DSumerian and help me continue to make great content for you. Thank you very much for watching.